hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Yakuza 5 Extra Hard Difficulty video walkthrough. This is part 2, Tiger Saijima, and we're immediately thrown into the first battle, which if you're playing a new game hard run, this is one of the hardest fights in the game, because Saijima has no moves, he's slow as fuck, and these enemies are incredibly aggressive. However, this is New Game Plus, we have all the moves in the world and we're going to embarrass them. And Saijima is one of those characters where he is so powerful when you have heat mode that he becomes a tank and he does massive damage too, which means he really is just a super powerful, really, really hard to kill kind of character. And he can be really fun to use if you're in the mood to use him. Personally, I would rather not play as him, but... I appreciate he's really strong, and especially in this game. In Yakuza 4, Saijima had this ability where his, his combos were quicker, I think. They just seem to flow much faster than they do in this game, and you can do some serious damage in that game just because of how much faster he was. In this game, it seems to be a lot more focused around these bouncers and doing those context-sensitive swing moves, and they're incredibly powerful because once you have that ability, all you need to do is grab one guy, bounce him, and then you go into an invincible spinning attack, and you can chain it, and you can beat all groups effortlessly incredibly powerful character and that's not mentioning his heat attacks do some of the most damage in the game and he has the ability to pick up heavy weapons which means he can pick up motorcycles he can pick up massive power boxes he can pick up this massive like traffic pole that kills everything in one hit absolutely majestically damaging character he also has a counter but his counter is a lot harder to pull off than Kazuma's because it's much tighter to do it. You have to do it just before attacks hit you, rather than like a week before they hit you, which is kind of what Tiger Drop feels like at times. So when somebody's going to attack you, wait on a couple seconds after when you would normally want to do the parry, and you'll land uh, the parry with this character. And landing it is insanely devastating because, as I mentioned, Saijima does big damage. But it's kind of funny too, because as much damage as this character does, we're coming into a sequence where the game really shifts its pace. We're going to be doing some pretty bizarre things in this chapter, and some of them are, are, are really outside the box, and you're either going to enjoy them for the novelty that they are, or you're going to be frustrated and get annoyed. Because a lot of it is, is Yakuza, but it's the kind of Yakuza that you usually could choose between, and uh, not everybody wants to do the side stuff. Sometimes it's fun one time, but then you don't want to do it, and unfortunately there's no choice here. That move right there is way easier to do in this game. In Yakuza 4, you have to time your button as they fall to their knees, and it's pretty tight, because the amount of times you get a kick, or you just don't get it, is, is quite high. And on this game, because you can do that context-sensitive throw them against the wall, it makes those moves really easy. I don't know if holding the left trigger will stop him from throwing them against the walls, but I hope it does, because the times when you want to dump people on the ground, as opposed to wall throw them, you don't have a choice. And the the normal throw gives you iframes, the wall throw doesn't. So it's really dangerous recovering out of that move, especially when there's a group of people. Like right now, I can get my ass kicked and there's nothing I can do, because the only character in this series that has an omnidirectional block is Tanimura, who is in Yakuza 4, he's the copper. And that makes him incredibly overpowered. And he's so overpowered that it stops you from being able to use his heat moves against bosses at certain periods because of how strong that parry is. It's, it's insane. And if I could change one thing about Yakuza, it would be that. When you hold block, it should block every angle. They can get through your grab if they want to. Uh, your block, sorry. All they have to do is grab you. And every enemy has a grab. So the whole directional blocking bullshit and the fiddliness of, of blocking directions you want to block in would all be eradicated in a, in a second. Because this is a game where when you block, you are static, you cannot move. And if you're wanting to block a specific direction and you haven't quite got it, you can get punished really quickly. And at times it just doesn't feel good. Like, I really, really dislike the way they do block in this game. And it's, it's the same as the soft lock that you get when you enter the the stance mode which is when you hold r1 where you kind of get a little bit of a lock on and you get the ability to kind of face your opponent but it's nowhere near good enough and it just doesn't feel good enough either and they could completely just combine the two mechanics and revolutionize them and bring them up to a modern standard where you have a traditional lock on 
and when you're not in it, you've got that soft lock that the game's always had. And make it so that the lock on guarantees that you block where the opponent is if you press block when you're locked on. That's how it's meant to be. That's how Dark Souls does it. And it works. And that's a game that's very janky in its own way, that's very archaic in a lot of ways. But it works. Whereas this game, how many times do you get punched when you're trying to block something because your character didn't turn around fully, or you were in recovery frames and you physically couldn't get your block up in time? It happens all the time. And you'll notice, if you watch any people go for no damage in this game, they will never ever attack or do any action unless they know it will 100% land. Because if they don't, you're going to take damage. And that's how the game works. And it's really frustrating because it stops you from being able to style and do really fancy dodge combos. Because if the enemy dodges it, and they do on the harder difficulties, you're in so many recovery frames and you can't block where they are and they've punched you. So. High level Yakuza play doesn't really exist because of the way the systems work, because the systems do not allow you to play high enough without being incredibly timid and choosing your shots. And against a room such as this, there's like five or six dudes in this room and all of them can attack me as feverishly as they want to and sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Like, there are times where they will hit you at the most perfect moment to land a hit if they'd have hit at any other moment, you were in iframes, but they didn't. They landed it the second you were vulnerable, and the computers are really good at doing that. And it makes it a very difficult game to feel like you're any good at it. It really does. Because it just feels like one of those games where you just you would succeed anyway. You know like Assassin's Creed, where one of the biggest problems with Assassin's Creed is the fact that the game almost plays itself and it's really hard to fail outside of those really strict moments of, oh, chase this guy, you got it out of view, fail. Or chase this dude and you went down a wrong street and it instantly failed you because you desynced. Like aside from those moments, you never die in those games because they play themselves. And there's a measurement of that in Yakuza which is mitigated on the harder difficulties but it's still present because of how powerful your character is and just because of how, like, there's a lacking precision to it. Which, if Platinum came in and touched up the combat, it'd be fucking amazing. But it also wouldn't be Yakuza at that point, it'd be something different. And I, would, I wouldn't want that to happen for the Yakuza fans. But for people like me, who want a responsive block and a good lock-on, and want the combat to be faster and fluider and better, I would make it so that, you know, essentially, every character moved like Akiyama from Yakuza 4, where he can cancel his animations at almost any point, and it's really fun to play as him. Like, he's got no damage, but he's got that mobility. And that's what I love about that character. But that's the end of the video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and you take care now.